of these changes play a factor in this game? Like, what are your thoughts about that? Mm, I think it's kind of doubtful. What I think might be more important is the Swain nerf that actually came in. Um, also, things to note, Aurelia is not available because she was a recent rework, so it's, it hasn't it been that true. three days yet for the week. Um, also, the Jin Ginsu's interaction is also disabled at the current yes. time, so that is not going to be available, so that Jin priority might go a little bit lower. However, Kaisa is available, and it's she's been looking pretty strong. We are going to get into picks and bans, though, so finally. I'm so excited for this series. I know, I am too, and you're talking about Kaisa Prototype did bust out in the semifinal, and he's even gone, gone on to Twitter saying it's a better vein. He really loves this champion, and we have to see if Columbia College will respect ban the Kaisa, or if they know how to play against prototypes. Uh, so far, we have a uh, Camille and Olaf banned from Maryville on the blue side. On the red side, Columbia College has banned out the Tom Kench and the Zach. Tom Kench being uh, kind of a key support right now. Denies a lot of engage, helps the AD carry out a lot. Mm -hmm. And another support known for filling that kind of disengaged role that's been rising up in popularity has been that Morgana. Uh, mm -hmm. She's been especially strong when paired with the Caitlyn. And as a duo, Okay, which is just banned, actually. Um, it is. Just that, got that, banned. That's a very strong counter to the Zyra Ooh. Khan lane, which are both up. So with the Caitlyn gone, you would think that Zyra Khan and Kai'Sa would be the two priorities for AD carries. But despite the Swain nerfs, that's probably going to be the first lock in here. Going in the first pick Swain, and now we also know Saskia was one to not play that many tanks. So this is a flex Swain pick. He's been known to play a lot of damage dealers in the top lane. and But CKG can also bust out the Swain when needed. Looks like we're going to have a Skarner pick in the jungle for Buckzack. Now, we haven't really mentioned this, but Buckzack and West for their respective teams are coming in in technically off roles from last season. Buckzack being RMU's ADC, West being RMU's top laner. How does this, uh, you, you think it could affect them negatively, but they've been both playing well. And as you mentioned, Kaiza getting locked in for Evan RL. Yeah, that one didn't take long. I, I do think that switching and transitioning from roles gives you a lot of perspective on how other roles are expected to play the game. And it, it kind of tempers your expectations on what to expect from them. You're going to be a little bit less quick to blame them if something goes wrong because you have the experience of playing in that position and uh, doing those same things that each role has. And I think especially players that transition into the support role, do really well because the support role is all about helping out that team. Uh, usually has some element of shot calling. So when you know what the other roles are thinking of and what they want to accomplish in a specific situation, you're a little bit more accommodating and that shows in your calls. Now, one thing we see from Maryville picking up the Ash, Prototype busted that out twice in their semifinal against Manitoba. Played it pretty well. Solid engagement with the Tom Kench off the bench. You would have to think that a Morgana has to be prioritized right here. Maybe a Morgana ban or pick. Just any way to stop that Ashel. We also see Sejuani being matched for the jungle. And Julian picking up a Cassiopeia. And right now, Cassio, very strong mid laner. Being able to stack up that tier. Scaling is really well. And with the new changes to Mana Flow Band, this could really benefit Columbia College. And Julian loves his Cassiopeia. It was banned against him both times uh, in the Maryville match in Week 6. Mm -hmm. Also, the Skarner and Sejuani are two huge priority junglers that have been picked up. We already see Olaf, Trundle, and Zach taken off the table, so those are basically the only two that are left that, were, that would be deemed somewhat confident. I'm a little bit taken aback by this Ash. It's something that is definitely great in a team environment, but I tend to think of someone, a prototype as more of an AD carry that would go for something like that Kai'Sa or Vayne, something where he can really stand out among the team and try and carry himself or carry his team with those yeah. DPS and those late game team fights, but he's just going to fall back to a more supporter role. And overall, right now, the Maryville lineup doesn't have that much damage on their roster. They have the Swain and the Ash, but those aren't really what you would consider high damage uh, champions in their roles. Not at all. And as we see in the second rotation of bands, three of the four bands were targeted at supports and not just any support, a tank support. And that still leaves Morgana left on the table for disengage or black shielding the Sejuani ult a Swain pull in with his E, Ash Arrow. Will, is one of these teams going to pick it up or does Columbia College have something in mind? I figure with Morgana being so powerful, especially with new tanks being banned out, what could we see? And now Lulu being picked up from Maryville. Uh, Lulu is US something. Champion. Yeah, Lulu is something that hasn't really seen that much priority. What I do expect from all the CC Orin. that Maryville's picking, yeah, Orin now in the mix as well. You're going to have to take cleanse if you're Julian. <laughs> Maybe yeah. even Evan Arl wants to fancy that one as well. And Morgana seems like it would fit so great as a support pick right here to round out the composition to kind of negate all that crowd control. I don't know if it's something Dean wants to play or something that they've been practicing, but it would round out the composition quite nicely. But there's so much CC a and threat. not even Ooh. that much damage on this Maryville lineup. It seems like they're going to go all in on this early game because 
they, they're confident in their lanes. They're confident in their individual player strengths. And they don't want to go against that Columbia College macro in the mid to late game. You, I mean, I have to agree with you right there. You look over on the side of Columbia College, you have the Kaiser, which is, if gets snowballed early, the early game damage is ridiculous, and it does scale into the late game well, being able to flex between AD and AP, as well as the Cassiopeia, the hardest scaling champion for mid laners, I guess. I guess with the Gangplank, he'd be the hardest. Yeah, and his ear. She's and a monster. As well. But Cassio is just ridiculous. Can absolutely melt through tanks like Orange, Sejuani, Swain, even the bulkier types. Uh, but coming out, looks like Evan RL will take the cleanse in this matchup. Uh, there's a lot to cleanse and wouldn't be wrong for that. And I honestly, I do like the Thresh pick. Really helps with the disengage. And it's m a little bit more reliable than the Morgana with her Black Shield being able to be popped. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be really looking at how Dean is able to use those Dark Passage, those Lanterns out. Because once your teammate gets hit by an Asho, the carries have cleanse. So they'll be able to get out of that. If there's a lantern at their feet, they're going to be scot free. And that could really help them disengage because, like we were mentioning, with this scaling, Columbia College doesn't really want to take these scrappy skirmishes in the early game. You could very easily get out skirmished by the Swain, by the Ash. And of course, the Sejuani is going to be doing so much work in this early game and then scale up to be a tanky monster. On the other hand, you have Buckstack on this Skarn, who's going to be looking to pick people out with that suppression ultimate and just bring them back into their team. And if he does that, Cassiopeia can drop the Miasma on them. They are not going anywhere. And you have Kaisa to really lay down the damage you got thrush to keep them in there too yep. once columbia college gets on a target they're not going anywhere that's right and that's one thing we haven't talked about even though we talked about all the cc on maryville side we do have to look at what columbia college is bringing will maryville have to pay you know the skarner tax as it's been known around the lcs and other collegiate regions uh the ultimate is just point and click cc and with that you have scions ultimate scions q the miasma from cassiopeia and thrush having hook and flay and his box there's a good bit of CC on Columbia College's side, too. May, might not be as hard as what Maryville's bringing to the table, but I think the good combination of CC plus high DPS, I think we can both agree Columbia College won draft right here. I think they both have some win conditions, but I think if they get into the middle late game, Columbia College will be very happy with what they've done here. Um, a lot of comfort champions, they did manage to get the Cassiopeia on the Julian. Yeah. What I do like, though, is that with different players and other than subs, Maryville adjusted their draft from what we saw in week six. They don't have the Scion. They don't have the Kha'Zix. They're branching out, and they're trying something different, and they're showing strategies that they haven't necessarily done before. And this is game one of this best of five, so you really have this opportunity to kind of feel out the other team. If something mm -hmm. doesn't go right, hey, you can change stuff up. You can try again. You've seen how they play the game a little bit more. And given the fact that no one's taken a game off of Columbia College yet, you really want to just take every stab you can to just mix something up. Because once you find that winning solution, you can try and do it again. Otherwise, you're going to be left to just keep on shooting in the dark because you don't really have evidence of Columbia falling. That's right. And as the spectator delay is taking down, uh, I'm going to look at you, Shadow. What's one lane after seeing the champions you want to prioritize and look at throughout the game? I'm looking at how these junglers uh, path in their early game and how they transition down into this bottom lane. Because these are not really your disengaged supports where you would see like this Morgana and this Tom Kench that's been mm -hmm. so popular in the LCS, especially that clutch versus TSM semifinals, uh, where everyone was just, or excuse Hockey, me, yes, uh, the, the, the 100 Thieves versus clutch semifinal, where the game just went on forever with a Cloud Drake up because both teams just kept disengaging because they had Morgana and Tom Catch. There's none of that in this game. You have the Lulu, who, yes, is more supportive, but you have the Thresh, who has the ability to go in. And Lulu also likes to get up aggressive in your face with that Spell Thieves and get all of that poke down. And the Ash is very good at trading in lane as well. She has a decent amount of range in that volley once it gets down to a low cooldown. Mm -hmm. is very good at poking. So I'm definitely going to be looking at how these bot lanes play because uh, an advantage there can definitely snowball into a first blood turret can snowball into a dragon, which may or may not be a very important one, such as a fire. It can mm -hmm. snowball into the mid lane just the rest of the map, and you can really take the game over from there. You know, I think one thing that will benefit Maryville if they can get ahead in the bottom lane is summoner spell. We do see Evan RL, as mentioned before, taking the cleanse. So it's a heal ignite lane versus a cleanse ignite lane. If prototype and west can go aggressive and start chunking them down with the volleys, as you're mentioning, it, we could see a potential of an ignite trade. But Maryville coming out on top because of that heal. And Cleanse is good, you know, to stop, let's say, a Polymorph or something like or that. Or Ignite. Ash at six, you have that. Or, yeah, Ignite as well. But uh, just looking at runes, the Thresh is taking Unsealed Spellbook for Dean. That's going to be really critical in keeping a track of what Summoner Spell Thresh has. A lot of lane presence with the ability to teleport. And as we're getting into game, right into a pause.
wonder where that pause could be. Maybe uh, up. According, it says DC. My guess was Drake Porter got mad and threw something out of the Columbia College uh, practice room, but just uh, perhaps I'm in no rush since I'm still in the loading screen on my classic Ooh. MacBook Pro. Oh, and my game has bug splat. I will be back. <laughs> Let me well, just reconnect a here. Asus laptop. Uh-huh. Well, as you're getting ready, I'm going to pull up all the scoreboards and all that fun stuff. Champions are on the rift. It is time to play League of Legends. For ladies and gentlemen that don't know, welcome to the North Regional Final. If you're just tuning in, we have Columbia College on the red side versus Maryville, the defending national champions on the blue side. This is game one of a best of five series. Uh, I'm George Crook, for those who don't uh, know. Joined by Shadow Visions star NC State mid laner, who is now sadly a season's ending. Now, right off the bat, something uh, that happened: Bugsack forgot to buy items. That's not How, good. That's not good at all, especially being a Skarner. Sigils are very important. Being able to take the sigil for Skarner to get the bonus movement speed and attack speed is critical. With uh, Bugsack having to go back to base to purchase items, Julian's taken over in the typical jungle starting point, where it's just right behind his red buff. But looks like Maryville will take the top river sigil and Columbia College will take the bottom river sigil. Both Cat Ears and Saskia are maining that sigil. You get 30, no, 15 gold, 30 split between anyone who stands on it. And it seems like Evan RL and Dean are both looking to take that bottom. I'm river into sigil. the game. You're into the game. Hopefully, uh, not too much trouble. You can see what's going on around the map. Basic five man fan out, though, making sure. Nobody does anything crazy. I think it's game one. Nothing too crazy going to happen. Both junglers starting bot side, getting the double leash from their bot lane, really helpful. Uh, from a clear speed perspective, do you think Cat Ears will have the advantage because of the Sejuani? Or will, thanks to Bugsack's passive with the Sigils, the Skarner will have better? Clear. Skarner typically has the faster clear speed in the early game. Sejuani is more known for having that CC ability to gank effectively with mm -hmm. that massive stun that basically forces a cleanse out of any single mid laner. So if she had the, one of the fastest clear speeds in the game uh, up there with Skarner, there would be a lot more uh, calls out for OP Sejuani than there even currently <laughs> are. I know a lot of people are sick of seeing her <laughs> yeah. be such a staple in the jungle meta. Skarner's risen up quite a bit lately. Thanks to uh, Cat and Flowers and some associated buffs. A lot of <laughs> trading going on this bot lane. That's going to be Evan Arnold right. taking out a huge chunk. Uh, Kaisa's thing, range though, is not great. One thing, though, about uh, Kaisa and Evan RL, he is taking Resolve secondary. We have Fleet Footwork and uh, the Precision as his primary. He is taking Resolve. I did see the Bone Plating proc. So that is to keep in mind extra health, extra regen, something along those lines. Uh, I don't know what the other rune that he took was. Maybe Chrysalis. I've seen that being popular amongst ADCs who want to take a more protective lane. It also speaks to the fact that they're not expecting to necessarily win against this Ash Lulu lane who's shoving them in so heavily. Kaisa really uh, has a lot of success when she can get out of that lane phase and into those more mobile team fights. She can use her W to impact the team fights from long way from the long range, and the Thresh also does not really excel in that lane phase. You want to be able to get picks with that death sentence and just roam around. Something to note, ooh, is he going for another trade under this turret? That's a lot of turret damage. That is. Oh, uh, Wes taking down a half prototype still at three-fourths, but Dean and Evan RL are both taking half or below half, respectively. Dean ate a huge chunk of damage right there. Really Something I'm going to be watching is how he uses this spell book because a lot of supports that opt into this uh, Rune will swap out for that teleport eventually, and then when something happens that in the top lane, they can, if they're in base, they can actually teleport in the top lane and impact that play. And then that obviously that top lane pressure can snowball into a lot of relief off of the junglers and mid lane, and it down into the rest of the map once the top laners have their teleport advantage. Now with all the excitement going bot lane, I do want to take attention to the, oh wait, uh, Dean with a flay, we look for hook, no hook. But taking a uh, look to the top lane, we do see Scion with Minion Dematerializer. And for that, the Banner of Command, uh, all that giant Banner of Command, Banner buff, your Baron minions have fat damage on the turret. We will see that come into play because Orn is known for taking Banner every now and then, and Sejuani can also take Banner too, if she pleases. Holding the Minion Dematerializers will be pretty crucial for Scion in the top lane. I definitely think he can either use them early or he can save them. Uh, some people kind of prefer to save the minion dematerializer as kind of 
in insurance if the other team gets barren uh yeah you can just de- dematerialize those ban those barren banner minions <laughs> and if they take your inhibitor you can just dematerialize with those super minions however i do expect misty will use some at some point in this lane however he's not really pressured to really get an advantage in this lane because he knows he has those late game carries that he can fall back on he has the skarner who's going to be doing a lot of damage in this early to mid game and he has a cassiopeia who's just going to scale up and become a late game monster that's completely why it's always taken away from julian he can play this champion phenomenally ckg also no slouch on the swain it's comfort pick for him and it's definitely something that is very strong in the current meta and uh, speaking of Cassio and the way she's scaling, Julian already getting a 4 CS lead, 5 CS lead now in the mid lane. That'll be crucial to keep up. Uh, gold right now, dead even. You have the tiny CS advantage in mid, and for Columbia College, Maryville and Prototype are getting a CS lead down in bot lane, but that's to be expected with the Ash and the Lulu, double range. Whereas Thresh is a semi-range. I don't know what you would call it. I think it's like... Eh, it's Connor. Oh, yeah, Skarner going down bot lane. Gets West. West has uh, three procs of the Plasma on, but looking turned around. Prototype procs the Q going. It looks like nothing else will come of that. Dean did blow the flash for that. West also flashed out. So two summer spells down, but one thing to keep up, the unseal spell book will reduce the summer spell cooldown on that flash. So expect the Thresh flash hook, flash flay earlier than what uh, West can be. Ooh, hook. Yeah, but very true on the Summer Spellbook point. They're looking to get so aggressive here on Dedeen. Yeah, they are. Prototype getting more aggressive. Procs the Q. Looking, the there's a heal pop by Hook Top. And First Blood for top lane. West in the bot lane. Also looking to top. Three-man gank. Misty Stumpy. Under turret. Call under turret. And, ooh, dead as well. What a roam by CKG and Cat Ears going to top lane, picking up a kill. And you have to wonder, like, these cross-map rotational plays or just responses – what is Julian doing? He was backing at the time, uh, picking up his tier, and what looks to be the start of a lost chapter. CKG didn't even have to burn teleport here. What a great roam from him. And we're seeing the early game that Maryville needs to get off to if they want to have a chance in this game. They need to get the gold on their carries. They need to be able to kite out that bot lane with the Ash and expose Dean when he doesn't have his flash up. That was a beautiful play by the 2v2. And mm-hmm. then in the top lane, such a well-coordinated dive. There wasn't much Misty could do. And you see he hasn't even teleported back into this top lane. He's actually looking for a play down the mid, but he's not going to find anything this time. Yeah, not going to find anything. Swain just now getting back to lane, approaching the Tier 2 turret in mid lane for Maryville. Uh, one thing to note, in the bot lane, that bottom lane turret for Columbia College is already down 40%. So there's only about 60% left, and that first brick would be huge for Maryville. Swinging that gold heavily in their favor for more early game pressure. Uh, it just really, I'm not going to say bad, but unfortunate that West did pick up the kill with the Ignite. But hey, first blood is first blood, as well as picking up second blood. For sure, and since CKG still has the teleport that he's held on to, I would love to see Cat Ears actually find time to visit this bot lane now that he knows Dean does not have a flash, and focus Thresh out. Thresh should be in this lane now playing back with the Dark Passage in case they mm-hmm. get ganked, but if he ever overextends or steps up too far, you can easily punish that with a five-man gank bot, and as you mentioned, the turret is already down to half health. If you can el- eliminate that and get oh. that first blood turret, you're now looking at a two or 3,000 gold lead. Speaking of which, Prototype just hit level 6, the crucial point for Ash picking up the ultimate. Now we can look for cross-map plays. I wonder if Prototype did take the ultimate hat. If so, that will bring the ultimate's cooldown to about 33 seconds max rank. Looks like we have a 5 Julian. bot lane. Julian gets popped on. Cleanses out, flashes out of the way. Dark Passage available. Scarner gets rooted up. Bugsack makes it out alive. Dean, no flash. Remember that. Prototype going in. I'm up. Bugsack That's dies. Three. That's 3! That's 3! Triple kill going for the 4th. Double kill for the Swain in the mid lane. Evan RL looking to blast Cone over. It gets it. Double kill for CKG. Oh, they're still chasing, looking for a turret dive right here. Cat Ears goes in, Evan RL escaping. Oh, oh, what? Evan RL, oh, back in. I get Just him. pick up one kill. Oh, okay, well. George, that... that's a four for one for Maryville in this that... early game. And we've seen Lores get off to early leads against Columbia College, but they were never able to, to transition it. But this is already over 3,000 goal leads for Maryville. They're doing excellent in this early game. Everything is falling into place where they need them. They have one kill on Prototype and three on CKG now. They can easily transition these leads if they make the correct team rotation into Rift Herald, into First Blood Turret, and snowball this even more and maybe give the Columbia their first loss. That's right. Uh, only thing that's kind of unfortunate for them as well, going back to the word unfortunate, is a Cloud Drake is spawned. But one good thing about the Cloud Drake does give in combat movement speed now, as the patch 8.5 buff really helped with that. But you are right. One kill on the prototype, one kill onto 
uh, West and Cat Ears, but three on the CKG, not to mention the four assists that are going over the prototype. That's just a huge lead. Huge lead. And one thing also to look at, summoner spells. The Thresh Flash is coming back up, but no flash on Evan RL. No flash on Herb Cleanse on Julian. No flash on Bugzack. And the flash for Misty Stumpy's still down. All five flashes are still down for Columbia College up until this point when Dean just gets his back. There's only two up in the game, though. <laughs> it's no Saskio are. and Dean that have their flashes available. That was an absolutely just mess of a 4v4 there, but it all went Maryville's way. They found out the opportunities, and they were on the same page first. In That's that right. fight, they split up uh, Columbia College so that Buckzack and Julian ran up into the jungle, whereas Evan RL and Dean were coming from the bot lane, and they just got stuck being forced down that river, and they were just chased down. Well, this is the CC that we were talking about, the hard CC that Maryville has with so many champions. It played in their favor so well with zoning with Sejuani ult, catching people out with prototypes Ash ult, and the Swain just being a monster right now in the mid lane. So much AoE damage that can go on. And one thing I do want to also mention, for Maryville, both teleports are still up. We could mm -hmm. be looking at a five-man dive potentially in the bottom lane. They should be. They, that, that's what it should be, especially the range of Orange Ultimate, the way that Swain can go and interact. As soon as that Asher is up, I'm saying pop it. That's what and Misty's be teleport is down. They should be... Uh, oh, wow, in this mid lane. Julian, no yeah, still cleanse. Like, Catter's going in, Julian. Oh, man. He's you gone. To cap on that. Yeah, that was, <laughs> instantly got popped. That's a Cassio with no flash and no legs to run off of. So, ugh. And that's you a Swain with four kills. They can just push this mid turret. Skarner has to try and answer, but they just have so much priority in all of these lanes. Four kills on CKG that's, means he completely gets around this lane. That's a Swain with a Rod of Ages at nine and a half. That's great. Oh, Simon going to mid. Up, two man ultimate in the mid lane for Misty Stumpy. Is Swain turning around. Bugsack pulling back cat ears. But teleport from Sasuke comes in and they pull back the Scion. Looking to go. CKG pops his ult. No more healing from them. Or an ult coming through. Just Here to comes the bot lane. They're going to look for turret. Bot lane is roaming up. This could be first blood. Prototype clearing out a pink ward in river. Yeah, this, this is it. Five people in the mid lane. Will they give over a uh, solo gold or just a split gold? Too, too risky. They, yeah, they have too many low health people. But what a great collapse from Maryville, and it's now 7-1. to one. It's like Germany versus Brazil already in game Ooh. one. Maryville making Ooh. a huge statement with their rotations. They get jumped on by the Skarner and by the Simon, but they have that teleport ready. Saskio comes in, and even their bot lane had priority, so they're just going to come up the mid lane, get that turret, and now it's already a 5,000 gold lead at 12 minutes. This is almost unheard of. The Swain now having two stacks on his Rod of Ages, as well as the Haunting Guys. Uh, in part for the Landers Torment. That's huge. Despite CS deficit in the mid lane, that's irrelevant. Let's look down bot lane where prototype is at about, uh, give or take, 21 CS advantage right now, I believe. And that bot turret is about to fall as well. The continuous volley is continuing on the turret. It's already down 25% HP. And look who's behind. Julian is 0-2. Yes, he has a 10 CS lead, but there's four kills on CKG. Julian right. was not really able to get the oh. advantage that he would have liked in this lane. A lot of that might be due to presence of mind being changed. So Cassiopeia now doesn't get that free twin fang spam every time she levels up. Means it's a lot harder to find those opportunities to punish Swain when he's uh, do, trying to see us. We do see Cat Ears sitting in the bottom lane bush in favor of Maryville. There is a control ward in there right now, but there is a ward dropped by uh, Evan RL, I believe, in that lane bush for Columbia College aside. Will they, here's the thing, will they take the bait? Oh, a great W. Great W from the, the Kaiser. That's, that's her name. Finding out the Sejuani in bot lane. I think they just have to secede uh, the tournament, or turret, not tournament. Don't secede the turret. But they're just but, gonna forfeit the turret. They know they're so far behind. The turret's already low. There's nothing they can do. And this is just gonna be another advantage going over to the side of Maryville. Two turrets now, and that extends their lead to five and a half thousand with a Rift Herald on the map. That's right. Uh, so, uh, CKG still possesses the teleport. Misty Stumpy's coming back up, as well as all the flashes and cleanses around the rift. Uh, for the move right now, I believe we may see Maryville's bot lane rotate top. Looks up, uh, no prototypes going back down the bot lane. West is just dancing around in base looking for something to do. But uh, what what's the next move for Columbia College right now? Well, how do they come back in this lane? I know they have a late game team comp, but if they have to other scale early game, yeah, they have to scale. But how? how how do you they, want to they have to predict these rotations coming out from the side of Maryville. And you just saw it looked like Dean and Evan were actually walking in the top lane. Then they, they spotted the bot lane actually down there, and then they decided to match them. I don't know why their bot lane is still here for Maryville. You would like to think that you would 
swap up and try and get that last outer turret in the top lane as well as the Rift Herald, but it seems like they actually have priority on this Cloud Drake, or they just think their bot lane is so strong they want to get more kills in the 2v2. Well, one good thing about this bot lane is the engage factor. Ash Arrow, with the ability to ward up the topside jungle of Columbia College, Maryville has a lot of presence around the map. But taking the Cloud Drake, it looks like they will be giving up Rift Herald to Columbia College, a way that they could get back in this game. Uh, seems like Sasuke is not doing anything about it either. CKG, this will be a free Rift Herald for Columbia College. A bit surprising they got that. That's oh, going to be the cleanse from Julian. Oh. Here's a collapse. Julian with a cleanse. Sasuke now on the ult. Ult. Uh, Swain E going down into the CC chain. This is just bloody murder. CKJ picking up his fifth kill of the game. You're not going to kill this Swain. He's 5-0, no, he's got Rod of Ages, and he's just going to keep on stacking up these items, whereas Cascopia is still trying to stack that Saracen Brace. Now in the top lane. Top lane looking to miss his summon game. Dove on silent on top of force to kind of deny the Sedge passive, but gets stunned up anyway, gets rooted by the Swain, and... Six kills on the Swain now. This is just ridiculous. As well as we see the bot lane rotating to the top, and they will be taking down this turret. Looks like no response coming in from Columbia College. They will be. CC's to frantically trying to push it down mid, but CKG has teleport, and Lulu's roaming down. West is trying to come out and help, but that's going to be the Rift Herald summon. Will they be able to get this mid lane outer? I think it's likely, but it is going to be traded in the top lane. Here comes right, the teleport. Teleport coming, teleport coming in from behind in the river. Uh, West coming down from top side as well. Nothing will happen. It's just take the turret, escape. But. Shelly, as the LCS pros like to call her, take care of the turret. But other than that, that one-for-one -one turret trade, it's gold in the pocket of CC, but overall it's just not that good. You, you do have to make those lateral that. trades when you're this far behind, and CC seems to know it as well. There's 0-3 on Cassiopeia. There's only one kill on the team. It's sitting on Evan RL. You're thankful for that as he's able to pick up the death dance, which is kind of similar to Prototype, who only has the Essence Favor and Boost right now. But pretty soon, Prototype's going to be participating in those team fights, getting those kills, picking up more items. You see Jessica about the Zeal. So he's going to start doing a lot of damage, especially once he picks up that Hurricane and then the Infinity Edge. Oh, yeah. He is just going to wipe team fights. And actually, is such a great champion at uh, facilitating those team fights when there's a lot of tanks that you're able to kite. If you yeah. can slow down Skarner and outrun him, slow down Scion, these guys are very kiteable. It's like you're playing against a Darius. Oh, almost. looking at mid, uh, W being caught by Swain, but oh, the thrush! Uh, CKG, the Goodbye. passage, and Evan RL is dead. Emmy West being the scumbag he is, but he's lovable. It's okay. Taking the kill, well deserved from the Lulu. What an E by CKG on this Swain to stop the Dark Passage animation from taking Evan RL to safety. This um, incredible, full Andrews Torment, seven stacks on the Rod of Ages, and this is a free push for Miriable in the mid lane. Sound doing everything he can to wave clear, but the rooted up into the Ash Arrow. He's stunned into forever! The on old, and that CC chain is ridiculous! And looks like Bugsack's gonna go down, he does. Cat Ears may go down to the turret, he will. The prototype in the back line, dishing out full DPS. The Swain as well, picking up Here another kill. Orn. Or ulting, what we see. Oh, beautiful on the Cassiopeia, but will go down to the Miasma Poison. So far, it was an overall uh, two for two, I guess two or three for two in favor of Maryville, but they still are pressuring this Maryville has the health advantage, but they're going to uh, think the better of this one and back off. They know they have a huge lead. They don't really need to risk anything because as long as they can continue pressuring in the right places, they should have an easy closeout. You would think with a 7,000 gold lead, Columbia is really going to have to prove to us that they're a superior macro team if they want to have any chance of winning this game one. You are right about that. And one thing that we were mentioning earlier, uh, just being a late game team comp, but how you get to late game when you have to spend 1300 gold on the QSS? Look at the Cassiopeia Julian. Think of a QSS to go along with his cleanse and still dying in these fights. What there's has to be something done. Evan RL is still down. Uh, I believe now 1300 gold mid lane. You're looking at an 1800 gold deficit. It it's all stacking up. All lanes are just outright winning, and the CC is getting too hard for Columbia College to handle. I don't know if I necessarily agree with the QSS pickup for Julian just because they're so far behind that they need their damage items to have a chance to compete. You're not going to win these straight up 5v5 team fights because you're down so much gold. You need to find picks and then you need to transition that into objectives to find their way back in the game. A QSS is not going to help you find picks with the help of Fresh and Skarner. A QSS is going to help you in this, those sustained fights, but you're going to be losing those anyway. You need your items so you can actually deal damage and follow up on kills. Looks like Maryville implementing a 1-4 split at CKG in the mid lane without teleport, and the other four are looking towards bot lane tier 2. Uh, that is one of the easier objectives on the map right now. We have Baron coming up in 50 seconds. We have Dragon coming up in a minute 20. There's Banner. Yeah, Banner of Command gets dropped in the mid lane. Uh, five minion dematerializers still on that sign. We'll see if he procs one here. There's he cleanse. does. 
Clint's already burned over an E that he didn't even pull back. That's just how scared they are and how worried they are about the hard CC chain. That's just how threatening Maryville's team comp is. You know, looking at it in the beginning, I thought, oh, CC has a better team comp, but the hard CC is pulling out to be uh, the, the favorite. Like I mentioned, if Maryville can prevail in the early game with superior just ganking ability and rotations and collapses, look at this. Oh, Julian has to burn the QSS. Burn the QSS. Ornall coming through. Dean. He gets hit. Swain W, and he's popped. There's another kill, 8, 1, and 3 for CKG in the mid lane, as well as Maryville getting the tier 2 turret of Columbia College. They look like Ping's going down to the bot lane. Looks like Orn Swain. That's right, Orn and Swain are going back to, uh, down the bot lane. CKG's teleport will be coming up soon. Baron spawning and prototype shreds right now, especially with Lulu W helping out. Free red buff for prototype, as we see here. I think what was going to happen is just probably a reset. Proto's low on mana, even though it does have the uh, Essence Reaver. Hard reset, not that hard of a reset. Some sort of a reset, getting prepped for this dragon, even though it is another cloud. Mm -hmm. Not what you really would have liked from the side of Maryville. You would have hoped you could at least get something off of that pick on the Dean. They did get the mid inner, and that extends their lead to 9,000 now at 20, 20 minutes into the game. Minutes. This is this has to be the closest anyone has come to taking down CC this season. <laughs> But Maryville is making a very strong case that with this roster, with this draft, they have learned from their mistakes and they are ready to come back with a vengeance. That's right. And this isn't even the full roster. We still have Chody Wars is sitting on the side just in case they ever need it. That's what's crazy. Cat Ears coming in doing a phenomenal job in the jungle. But it really does show how much prototype means to this Maryville team. He's performing phenomenally, hitting almost every single arrow that we've seen so far and allowing CKG to be that high damage that they need in such a mono slash, I guess, duo damage dealer, if that made any sense. There's only two really main... Maryville don't have a ton of inherent damage on their team, but they're making it work because Swain is 8-1 and one right now. And right. even with the nerfs, do you just have to respect ban this champion if you're not willing to play it for Julian or Misty? You because have you have to imagine Saskia is prepared to play it too if CKG wants to take up something else in that mid lane. This is just such a strong pick for Maryville when it gets ahead. I mean, honestly, I think the Kalen ban, I haven't seen Prototype playing it too much. I haven't looked at his solo queue though. He's known for it, but I don't know if he you need to ban it over it. the Swain. But he hasn't been playing it in c -Law. And I think the Swain ban should just come through first. We have five Maryville walking down mid lane, trying to ward up Columbia College's uh, red side jungle from what it seems. Two tier two turrets still stand for Columbia College, but they are both in the side lanes. And Maryville chooses to run it down mid with all five strategy instead. A lot of great vision control coming through here for Maryville. They just completely swept out everything Columbia put down, and now they're going to have to face check to make sure that Maryville isn't doing Baron, whereas they're death stacking this bush. If they're not careful, yep. this could be a huge wipe. Well, one good thing, Evan RL just demonstrated right there, the Kaiza W. It does go longer than Jin W, which is also just a really nice way to check if they're doing Baron. And Arrow. They will... Arrow. Julian with the dodge. First dodge we've seen all game. Um... They do have ways to check Baron. Kaiza W. Kaiza also has uh, the Scryer's Orb, the blue trinket. So from distance, there is availability. But we do see top wave is stacking heavily in Maryville's favor, about to crash into this tier two. Phenomenal wave control. Look at this. They have two scanners. They have five pink wards on the map around Baron, and they have the wave control to have this huge top wave shoving in. Julian's going to have to try his best to clear it. It looks like they will be able to. But they're getting, they're getting oh, caught. Here goes Bugsack. Bugsack flash in. Ult on two. I believe that's the Swain. Ornall coming Swain's through. Swain's alive! Swain, Ornall. Swain is still alive. Uh, it finally goes down. It's a one for one trade so far. Passive. Looking to do any damage that it can to negate any time damage done. But one for one. So Swain is gone. Just know that. Oh, uh, one goes in. Miss hook for Dean. The Swain's dead. There's only one source of damage right now in prototype. But the health bars are not looking good for Columbia College especially with damage dealers like Julian and Evan RL low on health. Will this be, do they have time to reset right here? It seems I think like with no mana on prototype, he's not able to use that enchanting crystal arrow, even though it is available. That definitely signals a reset. Cat Ears doesn't have that war mugs yet, so he needs to reset for health as well. Once those items are completed, you really like to just be able to see them play around this Baron over and over again. Yep. But they're just doing this rinse and repeat strategy of pushing into the topside jungle of Columbia College, sweeping all that vision, putting down their pinks, and fighting for that control. But at some point, they're going to have to pull the trigger for this Baron, because otherwise Columbia will continue to scale up. You see Julian has three kills on the Cascade 
too. You know, he's got that Saris and Brace transform. He's got a Leandry, so he will be doing a substantial amount of damage if you left him unchecked. But at the same time, will Columbia be able to find another fight? Bucksack doesn't have Flash, so he can't drag in CKG, and he now has Zanya, so even if you do, right. he's gonna live even longer in those fights. One all one thing to also note is that West does have Ardent Sensor. Even though it's not Ardent Sensor meta anymore, it still provides a lot of crucial stats for teams uh, like Maribel Swain and the Ash that are well needed amongst them. Uh, so far, the late game, as stall as much as possible. I think Columbia College, for what resources they have, are doing a really good job at the Baron stall and just keeping up the Baron dance as long as possible. But it seems like Maryville is going into the pit two-man right now between Cat Ears and Prototype. They will, uh, will Evan be able to see this? That's a question. They Just use that, that they blue trinket. Off the Baron. That's right. Backing off the Baron for now, taking a Rift Scuttle. Dragon will be spawning I, in a while. And I think we just recently taken there is the Ash E to make sure they know what's going to be caught just on that. Arrow. Ornold. Arrow going in. Ornold going in. Up. Oh, that was the cleanse, I believe, but two man Ornold. Nothing happens out of that. The cleanse Very is burning. fishing. And they're yeah. really not going to be able to find anything, and this is not what you would like to see if you're Maryville. But on the other hand, Columbia College has to be perfectly content. They're, they've minimized this gold lead from about 9,000 down to 7,000 now, and they completely stalled out any chance of a Baron. That's right. Uh, but one thing to know, Evan RL, no cleanse right now. And the Ash ult is on, from what it seems like, a 45 to 50 second cooldown. Very low cooldown. Look for picks. Going back up to the top lane tier 2 now. Uh, fishing for an E for Swain. Nothing's happening. The cannon minion did get pushed away. Still looking to fight. The Scion with good wave clear. Uh, we'll see. No one's altering the turret right now. Up oh, two man E. There's a cleanse by Julian. And the turret does get taken down. M might look to be back up for Columbia College. Reset the health bars. Prep. And they are an award uh, in terms of Maryville at the right buff. What now? Maryville is committing so much to these turret pushes, but in reality, the Baron would help them end the game with their lead so much faster. And you really need that when you're playing these champions that don't really scale as well in the damage department into the late game. You have a bunch of tanky characters in that top jungle mid, and then you have an Ash who's not really known for being a hyper carry. Uh, yeah. Yes, if Prototype has an amazing fight, that you're going to be able to do a ton of damage, but you still have to play against Julian's Cassiopeia. So, given the fact that Bucksack doesn't have Flash, if you can clear that Blast Cone on the other side of Baron Pit and then start it, you're not really risking a 50-50 because Skarner can't get in that pit. So I would like to see them clear that vision one more time, knowing Skarner doesn't have the Flash and starting the Baron, and then taking a fight, because this fight is not on equal terms when Skarner is trying no. to steal the Baron, and you're up 7,000 gold. That's right. Uh, what, oh God, another Cloud Drake for Maryville. Really unlucky in this situation. Looks like they are going to be collapsing around at Cat Ears and West going down the Dragon Pit as well as Saskio. One thing about scaling late, uh, the McHale's Crucible are going to be coming in for the Thresh most likely. The QSS going on the Kaiza. QSS still on the Cassiopeia. There comes a time when the CC chain, you know, if one hits and gets cleansed off, the others may not hit. So you do have to keep that in mind. West did take blue buff. I don't know if that was meant to happen or what, but West Coast Carry, your support Lulu has a blue buff. Swain doesn't need it as much. I, I do think that giving to Lulu when Swain's not even in the area, in the vicinity, I mean, who else are you going to give it to? You, li you like to take it away, and you can't really diddle-daddle along too long without Columbia getting all that vision control back in the top side. So giving it to West right there is probably the best call. They are finally going back around this Baron, but they, what they've seriously run out of time, Cassiopeia and Skarner are getting their flashes back very soon. That's right. Uh, one, one thing to look down in bot lane, the minion dematerializers kept by Misty Stumpy was able to take out the banner of command cannon minion uh, uh, for Saskio. And I think if anything happens, Columbia College will have to push down bot lane if teleports are needed for mid lane, because it looks like a 44 is about to emerge. Getting pretty close there on that mini map, but Maryville, Columbia has just been happy to forfeit all of this vision time and time again because they don't know Maryville is not willing to pull the trigger at this time, and they're even calling Misty up from the bot lane, potentially going to use that Sion ult to come into a fight and just wreak havoc. He is seen though by the uh, scuttle vision and also the wards. So many deep wards in Columbia College jungle for Maryville right now. This vision is really helping them, but I wish, as we've all mentioned before, why don't just go to Baron? You have all the vision control at Baron. I know Evan RL's W is a problem as well as the Scryer's Orb, but looks like a Baron call is being made right now. They know the Scryer is down. Starting on the Baron. Here we go. Uh, Stumpy has really nowhere to TP right now. Evan RL with the W again, but they it's can going down fast. Here see. comes Skarner. Skarner's jumping. We'll be looking for a Cassio steal, and they pulled off. They pulled off. Orin ult catches out Bugzak. Bugzak flash. Oh, flash into the lantern. 
Oof. That Skarner Splash, though, he can't get into the pit unless he walks that way again, and Kalunga's yeah, actually right. backing off. Well, it looks like Maribel's going straight back to the Baron. You have to look topside, though. Also, look at topside. Maribel's wave is about to crash. In the there he goes. Having to back off. Sign alt right into CK. They're on Swain. Swain gets hooked into the Miasma. Swain's and Swain's dead. Up. There's no chance to uh, use his eyes. That's the word. Julian doing so much DPS. It's so long with Evan RL. So much CC, as we talked about, also on Columbia College's side. They just picked up three kills. And you know what's up right now? Baron. Maryville just gets wiped. What are they doing? They just let Misty engage onto their swing. He has Zhonya's. He has Flash. He doesn't respect Flash or Zhonya's any of the CC chain. And you saw once Columbia did that, they were able to just transition that into a free fight. Ash does not have the damage yet without Infinity Edge to break through this tank line that is just so strong. Because Misty Stumpy, he has four deaths. He's still gotten to be Scion and farm up into that bot lane. Bucksack just used that suppress onto Swain, bringing him in. Top and this is now a Columbia now. Baron. They're still down so much gold, but maybe with this late game composition, with their late game mentality and team fighting abilities, they will be able to bring this back from nearly a 10,000 gold deficit. That would be an incredible comeback, especially it's only game one. That's another thing. But as we did see in the top lane, Maryville's minions were able to take down the inhibitor turret. So there is an open inhibitor on the map for Maryville if they want to try to fancy anything. But if you are going to play a macro game against the best macro team in Collegiate League of Legends, you have to be prepared. I don't think you can win like this going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Columbia College's macro. As we both talked about, where's the engage? Where's the fight? Where's the, where's the decisiveness? That's one thing that seems like is absent right now for Maryville. Exactly, George. They're not they don't have to prepare for Columbia College's macro because there's nothing to prepare for if they don't have macro of their own. Who is shot calling for this team right now? You are swapping in individual players in and out all the time. You have prototype back in this lineup, but it appears like there's not enough synergy built up between the players and there's no voice on this team leading them to victory. You expect someone like West to be able to kind of call the shots and manage the players in these kinds of situations to just close out a game. But in a team environment, playing against a team as good and as seasoned as this Columbia College roster, you have to know where to exploit the weaknesses, where to snowball the strengths of your composition. And it seems like if they can't figure it out very quickly in the next 10 or so minutes, it might just be curtains on them. That's right. Uh, I'm doing a quick check of summoner spells right now. Both top players and both junglers do have flash down. Dean on Columbia College's side has flash and ignite down. Uh, prototype does have heal down. Other than that, all summoners are up. So both cleanses are up. The QSS is available. Uh, Kindle Gym, it can be built into a couple of things, like a Knight's Battle, for example. I don't think Mikhail's builds out of a Kindle Gym. But we'll have to see what Dean builds. I'm, I'm blanking on my uh, support item path. I'm, I'm just That's just okay. <laughs> I know, I'm washed up. Who Shit, plays support anyways, dude? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Apparently, West, he loves it right now. But West will need to step up along with the rest of Maryville's lineup to be able to solidify just dominance right here. You had a 10k gold lead, and now it's dwindled down to 5,000. While this Baron power play didn't net much in terms of uh, positive gold growth for Columbia College, it's stalling. Stalling for the late game. Casio now has a Void Staff. Look at Evan RL's Kaiza has a Nasher's Tooth. This is going to be high DPS team fights that are coming up, especially around this Dragon. That is an ocean. Once again, getting trolled by the dragons. No infernal, no mountain this game. Because after this Drake, it will be Elder. You're exactly right. But Maryville is really wishing right now. They have three Cloud Drakes to their name. They had some other form of fire. They could really use the extra damage when you're playing the Swain Ash composition as your only damage realistically. Because Orin said you want to just making up that tank line. Yes, you have Lulu to buff you and give a little bit of those attack speed buffs. But... You're still against this Cassiopeia, this uh, Kaisa, and all of the CC to lock you in place to eat that damage. And we expected there to be... Oh, Sarn is looking Oh, Bugsack going in? Uh, won't do anything off of that. Seems like uh, Columbia College does have priority in the mid lane, though, looking to take down the tier 2. Predator's still popped and active, but no Righteous Glory right now. Still no Flash. Oh! Oh! Dodge Evan back! RL. Oh, Evan RL getting uh, changed to seat. Oh! No! Yep, dead. Definitely Julian with the clients flashes out of the... Uh, one ult. Sion looking to go unstoppable, just stalling out time. He will be going down. And that is three, two kills. Two picks. Two picks. Well needed inside of Maribel University. 
Ocean on the map. Let's see what they can do. 5v3. Are they going to be able to run it down mid? Because if they can get this turret and the mid lane inhibitor, they can even walk it into that top lane. And death timers are quite long, 34 minutes into the game. And when you don't have that AD carry, it's just Julian who has to do this work. They're not even waiting for a minion. They're just going to tank this up and try and get as much as they can. Do as much as they can. And also to note, there is still an open inhibitor in the top side. You can get mid, get the inhibitor there, rotate top side, get the inhibitor there. That may be the plan, or they do have to go it back and like stop it. that top wave. The top wave is coming down for Columbia College with a uh, banner minion, even though it's just ranged. Oh, they're gonna fight! Oh, up, uh, arrow, come back up. He's Scar's dead. Big. Scar's also dead. The prototype's just nuts right now, but FNRL did respawn. Uh, Missy Summers about to spawn a three hook on by Dean. Flash out him. of it from Saskio. They got the double in hip. That's all they Here wanted. Comes Misty. All they Misty's ulting. Will it? Ah, Ooh. Summers drift does not pay off for him. Go to driver school. I mean, I would have failed that too, let's be honest, but no picks in return. That, in theory, just two free inhibitors. Which it took them over 30 minutes to round out this 10,000 gold lead. It would have been a little bit inexcusable if they actually threw that one away, but they finally found the pick that picks actually that they needed to be able to run this game down the mid lane, get that inhibitor, and they capitalize on their strong wave control. You had to commend them for that at least. They've had consistently mm -hmm. strong pushing waves in the top lane, even the bottom wave, even though they have to push up against a banner minion all the time. They're gonna get this ocean and they only have to walk up the bot lane and win one more fight to close this game on. You know what, despite all the different types of elements that were not in favor for Maryvolt, they still have four dragons. A four dragon elder buff? Ridiculous. And if you get the second elder dragon with those four buffs and the stats get, I think it's tripled or doubled, just if they play the late game, they do have an out. But I think right now, you focus that bot lane like they're doing. All five members of Maryville are sitting in bot lane looking for that tier two turret, and you just push to win. You know, Evan does still have flash, but no cleanse. Dean, no flash. Julian, no flash. Buckzack, no flash. Looking A for swing. Of and th that's just one thing that's been stopping me. There goes Maryville. Oh. CC into the CC chain. Thank you, and, as we just mentioned, no flash on Buckzack. He's dead. One good thing that has been happening, Saskio ults every time the uh, Skarner pops Righteous Story. Just denies anything right away. No more picks for the Skarner. And with no flash, once you go in, there's no way out. And this is the advantage of that Orin called the Forge God into no Morgana, no Tom Kench, no Braum. It's just Thresh that's trying to save all the allies as that supporter role. But are they getting caught here? Oh, oh, oh! Ebnar ults onto the uh, Swain. Swain is dead. And they're also chasing after the Sejuani. Will there be any more chase? Flushes out of the Scion queue. Looks like Prototype's popping off now, though. Getting a lot of auto and damage down onto the Scion, but nothing to come of it. Great pick by Misty Stumpy right there. Being able to cue uh, the Swain and Evan Orel from three screens away, ulting in to secure a, the kill. Yeah, and a bit of a blunder there from Maryville actually splitting up when all they had to do was be patient. They already got a Nexus turret from two massive super minion waves that were pushing in on that top side. All they had to do was not die and walk in that bot wave and have a 5v4, even maybe 5v3, depending on whether or not someone had to go answer that top wave. And they could have just walked that into Baron as long as they had enough pressure, but instead, CKG falls. That's his fourth death now after starting 7-0, and, oh, and they're just leaving a lot of openings for Columbia to come back. That's right, but one good thing is, even though the Baron is up, CKG does have teleport. That's always been a crucial thing. The double teleport pressure around the map has benefited Maryable. Uh, will they go for Baron or will they do another dance? I personally think cut the dance, force it. Bugsack still don't does not have flash. Oh, in, like the old, old Sejuani. Miasma coming down, Evan RL ulting in. There's a ult onto Evan RL from Ash or an ult as well. Too much CC chain. Bugsack down. But Bugsack's down. Misty Stummy going down as well. Hook misses from Dean. Oh, he's alive! He's still alive. He's still alive. He's still alive. But Julian is dead. Prototype flashing in. They're all dead. That's game. Flash. They're all dead. That is game. That has to be game. Maryville, while uh, the good news, Misty Stummy still alive for Columbia College. That's not enough wave clear. Prototype still up. Oh uh, no, Prototype is down actually. But CKG is up. West is up. Their two tanks are up. The front line is happening. There's only one Nexus turret stopping them. Will Misty Stummy be able to stop this? They're just There's no AD carry. It's gonna have to be a miracle. I, I don't think it's possible. Bugs next the nearest with 10 seconds left. Stumpy has to stall for as long as he can. Running around, trying to back up he all the waves. Moves. He's ulting the wave out, but I don't think that's enough. Too much that change in the turret, and I do believe that will be GG. Columbia College losing their first game of the entire collegiate season. Bugs actually trying to do everything he can to stop. Looks like to no avail, though. That is GG. Maryville University 
taking game one against Columbia College. Wow. First wow. loss on the entire season for Columbia College. Talk about coming out strong from Maryville University. Absolutely. And 